Hello, beautiful friends. Welcome back to another episode of the Robin Graham Show. Today, I have a very special guest with me, Ren Robbins. And I know, I know, I talk all about not growing your business on Instagram, but for years, I spent a lot of time on Instagram and I met some pretty incredible people. And I still believe it's a great place to build relationships, but not necessarily to grow your business, at least and not until you have the foundation of your business built first. With that said, Ren and I met on Instagram a long time ago, and we've had faith and podcasting in common since, and it was time that I had her on my show. So today we're going to talk about not only telling your story through podcasting, which is a pretty powerful thing to be able to do and to be able to reach more people and help more people and all of those beautiful things, but also how to start your podcast if you do feel that calling on your heart. I can tell you from experience, I love podcasting and I think it's just the most incredible way to reach the masses, but not only that, meet incredible people while you're doing it and it helps you grow your business too. So we're going to talk about that today. I hope you'll stick around and enjoy the conversation as much as I know I'm going to enjoy the conversation. Without further ado, Ren Robbins, welcome to the Robin Graham Show. Thank you so much. This is going to be so fun. Like you said, we have known each other on Instagram for years, and so it's good to connect face-to-face through Zoom. And uh, thanks for having me on your show. This is awesome. Of course. Yeah, of course. You're just a ray of sunshine. You're always like, mm-hmm. you just always look pretty. You've always got big earrings and you you shine God's light, I have to say. Mm-hmm. So will you tell the listeners a little bit about what brought you to this point in your journey to do what you're doing today? Oh, yes. I love that. Well, my name is Ren Robbins. I live outside of the Memphis, Tennessee area with my son and with my husband. We're in the process of moving uh, and building a house. And so uh, that's something fun about us. But I started my podcasting journey when I was driving home one day after I was teaching kindergarten. So I was a kindergarten teacher, a special ed teacher, then a kindergarten teacher. And I would listen to podcasts on my way home. So we're talking like 2012, 13, 14, that kind of thing. And so this was around 2015 and I was driving home and I was listening. And of course the podcast hosts were my BFFs. I mean, right. (laughs) They didn't know it, but they, you know, that's what podcasting does is that connection. But I remember God speaking to me, not audibly, but speaking to me in my heart and saying, Ren, you need to start a podcast. And I was just like, what? Like the basic thing I knew from a kindergarten teacher as a kindergarten teacher was you plug the smart board in, you can, you know, I can do that, but like basics, like I didn't know all the things that you do, the tech and all that, but I knew for sure God had called me to do this. And so I Drove home, immediately wrote down 34 women's names that either I knew them in real life or I had seen them online. And I wanted their God story to be told as in a megaphone because that I had seen such faith and their stories of clinging to the Lord. And so I started the Friends of a Feather podcast about four months later, just self sitting at the kitchen table, figuring out how to do it. And that led me to start that podcast and it was amazing and wonderful. And then uh, God led me into starting teaching women, Christian women, how to start, how to grow their business, how to start a podcast and in order to grow their business. And so that came in 2020 and uh, it's, it's been amazing. I am grateful to walk in the gifts God's given me and, um, and it's very freeing to do that. So that's, that's my story in a nutshell. (laughs) I love it. And now you have another podcast, right? Don't wing I it. I do. I yeah. do. I have the Don't Wing It podcast, podcast strategy for the Christian women. So that, and I created it because I didn't want people to wing it on their podcast. And so yeah. um, I, that's where the title came from. I love it. I love it so much. And, you know, when you were talking, it just, it reminded me of the fact that God doesn't call the equipped, He equips the called. So, Listeners, if you have this nudge on your heart, if you feel the Holy Spirit, you know, knocking on your door saying, do this thing, stop 
being afraid to start it because the reality is if you're being called to do it, if he's laid a purpose on your heart, he's going to provide every single thing you need. I have to say, like, there are so many times when I've got to answer a question or speak in front of a group or even do a podcast episode. And I'm like, Holy Spirit, activate. I don't know what the heck I'm doing, but I need your help. Will you help me? Will you guide me? And that knowledge, that wisdom is always given to me. So I encourage you listeners, as you listen to this, if you're thinking about starting a podcast or putting yourself out there in a new way, this is your cue. This is your message <laughs> to it, step into it and take action. Yeah, it's it's so true. And and while you were saying that, of just it's Holy Spirit in us, and He is going to be. He is going to answer when we ask, when we call upon Him. He's going to answer. And so it's that's the Christian life is just Holy Spirit inside of us doing what He's called us to do. So it's exciting, but it is scary. I get that. But yeah. definitely well, yeah. step out, step out. Yeah. You'll, you won't yeah. regret it. Absolutely. All right. So Ren, let's start with telling your story through podcasting. I, I think this is so, I just love it because I think so many of us have a story and we don't often think our stories are worth telling. We don't think they're important or we don't think that anybody wants to hear them. But the reality is if you feel like maybe you should tell your story, then chances are you should tell your story. So let's talk about that. Okay. Well, and I, I, when I was thinking about this and, and I love thinking about using our stories because that's what I did when I was beginning the friends of a feather is to share other people's God stories. And so story is so important. I mean, if you look at the scriptures, Jesus uses storytelling throughout mm -hmm. the, you know, through the, the New Testament and then the Old Testament. There's <laughs> gobs of stories that we can, uh, can learn about God through these, these people. And so I love the thought of our story. And when you think about it spiritually, like when I remember, uh, in high school, we were talking, taking an apologetics class and it was, um, where, you know, when you were sharing your story, no one can take that conversion experience away from you because you can tell it like it happened. It's an experience. And so I, I think of that the same way as our story, either how we got into business or our story of, um, something that, uh, God did in our life or a story of, of, um, just a basic story you can tell on your podcast to connect two dots. It's just, it's so important and no one can take that away from you. And so I love the, the aspect of story. And so there, there are a lot of ways that you can think about using your story or sharing your story on a podcast. And so there's four things that story, that story does for you specifically in your podcast, but really anytime, anytime you share your story. So, but specifically your podcast that there's four different things. Are you good with me sharing those? Yes, absolutely. Let's go. Okay. Okay. So when you share your story and well, I want to back up because we know that one of the most intimate forms of communication is through a podcast because people will listen to you you and it is as if the podcast host is talking to one person. I remember talking to you just a minute ago, Robin, saying we think that the podcast hosts are our best friends. Well, why? Well, because of that intimate connection. It is their voice to our ears, in our heart, in our mind, and we are having it is as if we were having a conversation with that person. And so I want to base that that the foundation is the intimacy that that we, that connects us with that podcast host. And, uh, and so storytelling does that when we are on a podcast, it evokes empathy. It's, it's, it's having that we're empathizing with somebody like we are like, Oh yeah. Oh yeah, girl, not sympathizing or feel sorry for somebody, but empathizing with somebody and saying, yeah, Oh yeah. And so it, it evokes that where we are understanding the other person and we're share we're we're in it with them. We're we're like, yeah, oh yeah, me too. I can share that feeling. And then another reason why storytelling is so powerful on a podcast is that it does create that connection. It creates that relatability so that when we turn, you know, use our phone and and push play on that podcast app or put our AirPods in, that it we feel connected and we feel like we can relate to them. And so that's the second thing. So when they're sharing their stories with us, 
We can feel that. Okay. So I want to kind of flip it on the other side and say, if that's how we're feeling about a podcast host, then that means that if we start our podcast and we are the podcast host, that means people are feeling that way about us. Like that they're going to have a connection with us. They're going to yeah. relate to us. They're going to, they're going to empathize with us when we're telling them, even if it's a silly story or a really deep, meaningful story, they're going to empathize with us. And so that's the cool part is that it works both ways that if we are the podcast host, they're doing that with us, or if we're on the other side of that. So those are two, uh, ways we that storytelling is just really powerful yeah I love that and when you talk about that connection it builds trust and trust determines buying practices so it's kind of a no-brainer that if you're totally. wanting to grow and be seen as an authority it's a great way to be able to do that well, and we know that when people are ready to buy when we are um, ready to push, you know, add to cart, or <laughs> we're ready to give our credit card number, you know, give our number over uh, online. We know that that is an emotional decision. It's not logical. Logic will actually help us to justify the sale, but the emotion, that's what people click add to cart from is the emotional. Um, and so when you have that connection, that intimacy, can that intimate connection over through your microphone, through their AirPods, that is setting you up as the authority. It increases your brand awareness. It allows you to tell your story, but it's the connection. And that's what allows them to click out at Descartes, that emotion connection, emotional connection. Yeah, 100%. All right. Well, let's talk about how to start a podcast since we've now inspired everyone to take that first step. Where do they yeah. begin? Wow. That's, it's, it's great. <clears throat> and when I hear of people wanting to start a podcast, I am like, yes, because they know the benefits <laughs> and they know how it can benefit their business. And so, like you said, it's a no brainer. Um, if you are wanting to establish that connection and, and try to, uh, or get future clients in, in your realm. Uh, so the first thing to do is you really need to establish a goal for your podcast because some people they're out there and they're like, this is my ministry. This is my hobby. This is my passion project. And I say, awesome, go for it. But as long as you have a goal, like if that is your goal, or if you are in it to bring in leads for your business, I think it's an incredible way to do that. And so that's really the first thing is that question. What is your goal for your podcast? Um, and so that's the first step. And then after that is really where you are digging in deep because you need a trailer and then you need, there's some other things that you would need the first three episodes to launch on your uh, launch day. And, you know, the tech, there's a tech aspect and your graphic and music and all the things I have a guide that your listeners are welcome to go grab, but it, it's your first six steps just so that you kind of know what is included in that. And that's the first six things you need to do, but it's, um, it's, it's your graphic, it's your music, it's your, uh, trailer episode, which is kind of like a movie trailer. And it is, um, your goal for your podcast. And then also of really looking at what you're going to title it. What are you going to name it? And um, so those those are some steps that you want to take when you are ready to start. Yeah, absolutely. So I think, you know, you said the very first thing you said was your goal. And I think that is important because when you mm -hmm. when you start with your goal and or your mission or your purpose in yep. in doing this, then you can do everything else much easier. So it really is clarity, right? So yeah. what is your message going to be? And then when, and what is it you want to do with that message? What's the end result that you want to get either for yourself or the people that are listening, right? Yeah. And I, I really encourage, and if the girls that are in my program, my group program right now, flight, they, um, have done market research. So there is, um, that's the first module of my program is for market research, because you have to know what people want and what they see you as, and that goes in with your goal. So you want to make sure that you're serving those listeners well, and the way to do that is to do market research. Absolutely. And that gives you an opportunity to gain 
your voice of customer, because the more you use that voice of customer, the more they're going to understand what it is you're going to be helping them with, or what yeah. information you're going to be sharing with them that can improve their life, simplify their life, transform their life, whatever it is that they mm -hmm. are wanting to gain from you. Yeah, it's really important. And I think that's a step that a lot of us forget um, because we're like, oh, we want to. And, and like I said, stories are so powerful. And so it, sometimes we get and we're like, oh, I got to share my story. I got to share my story. And that's part of it. Absolutely. But we have to make sure that we are giving the listeners what they want. And that's through market research. Just you have to know um, that you are serving them well. And it's not at, one thing that I've said from the very beginning is the biggest, dis, the biggest I guess, um, lesson I've learned in all my years of podcasting since 2016 is that it's not about myself. It's not about you. And so I, I preach that. <laughs> I know my clients are probably like, okay, enough of that, but it's, it's true. It, it's really true. We have to get out of our, you know, it's, it's really about the Christian life as well is that we are, you know, um, we're, we're getting out of the way. And we're letting God shine through us and work through us, but it really is not about us. It's what we can serve our, our clients with or our listeners. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So let's, so let's go through these six. So your goal, market research, um, you've got to have your trailer, you've got to have your graphic and the graphic needs to be eye catching. The trailer should be clear, concise, not too long, not too short, um, music, right? Most podcast intros have music and then you need when you launch. And I know whenever I've worked with clients to launch websites too, I always say at least three blog posts, same thing. You want to have at least three episodes so that when you launch, people can binge listen, right? Yeah. So those are some of the like basics, technical or basics, I guess, structural things, but then yes. you have the tech side of things. And what do you suggest, what do you teach your, your clients, your students to use in terms of, I mean, you, AirPods work great. If you don't have a mic set up, I like the sound of a mic because mm -hmm. I feel like sometimes the AirPods have like a little echo or, or like a hollowness to them. But, um, and then you need a tool to be able to edit and then you need to know, like, do you need an MP3 file? Do you need an MP4 file? Where do you record? So can you give us a little bit of insight into some of that techie stuff that people need to know as well? Yeah, absolutely. I definitely think simple and uh, it is, is best. Simple is best. I know a lot of people go a little bit um, extreme with it and you don't have to. You can, but you don't have to. And mm -hmm. so I like keeping things very simple, very basic, um, there is a mic that's that's 80 bucks on Amazon. It is the ATR 2100 and I have a link for that, but it's it's really easy. It's easy to use. It's easy to plug in. You, it's really a plug and play. It's really excellent. Uh, and it's USB, like you can plug it up into your computer uh, or uh, have it as a USB. So it's really, really user-friendly. Uh, and then, yeah, you need headphones because when you edit, you want to be able to hear what people are going to be, what you sound like, what people are going to hear on the other end. Uh, and so, and then a computer, a laptop that either has uh, Audacity, which if if you have a PC, you would have Audacity loaded onto your computer and then GarageBand for uh, a Mac. And really that's it. That is it for at least the uh, equipment. You will need a hosting site, which I always recommend Libsyn. Uh, Libsyn is an incredible place where you own all your content. You pay a monthly fee, $7, and it is holding your podcast episodes there. And so that is a uh, another thing that you would need. And then yeah, that's really it. I really encourage people to be very basic with their setup and to do what works and what is easiest. So that's really the, the, all of the tech part of it, um, except, you know, hooking it up and then recording and, you know, all that, that I walk through with my clients, but it, uh, it, it starts with that. So go get a microphone and, uh, <laughs> and yeah. some headphones and go for it. 
And I like how you said you keep it simple because I need simple. I don't want complicated, yeah, but, me neither. and you can record, I shouldn't have said, but, but you can record on zoom at, which is free, right? Yep. There are yep. other platforms you can use too. There's Riverside. Mm-hmm. I don't know mm-hmm. the, I'm always doing interviews on other people's platforms and there's mm-hmm. always some new thing that people are using. Yeah. I personally like zoom because it's simple. And if you don't have the pro version, you only need 40 minutes or you get 40 minutes free. So you right. can do it on zoom. And then yeah. you've got both the video and the audio. If you do the video, you can put it on YouTube, which is another way to then drive traffic to the podcast because YouTube's a search engine. So it works quite nicely if you want to yeah. do that, but you don't have to do the video. You can just keep it all audio. Yep. So you don't have to have hair and makeup done, especially <laughs> if it's a solo episode, right? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's a benefit for sure. Even more simple. Yeah. Um, yeah. And when you were talking about audacity, we actually use Descript for yes. our editing because mm-hmm. we can edit the audio and the video at the same time. Yes. And it also great... produces, yeah. And it also mm-hmm. produces transcripts, which I don't use, but um, it produces that too. So it's another great tool. Absolutely. It's a really good tool for sure. Yeah. But it's not free. You have to Well, you get one. up to, I think it's 10, eight or 10 hours of transcription free, but to do the editing, it is, it is a fee. So yeah, yeah. that is, it's an option. Definitely. Yeah. Yes. There's a lot of options out there now. And I think um, there's what over 3 million podcasts out there now. There's 5 million and 600, I think uh, a little uh, around 620 million blogs. So if you look at 620 million blogs and you look at over 5 million podcasts, you kind of look and say, okay, there's not really a comparison. And um, there were, I think it was 250,000 were not even live. Like they were not active podcasts where the the host is posting every week. Like they oh, might wow. have experienced that pod fade, which is, you know, you do seven and then you for, forget about it and you don't do it anymore. And so that, those are incredible statistics of yeah. just, you know, people are like, oh, it's the market's overcrowded. It's not. It's not when you, especially if you look at the number of blogs compared to the podcast and then the podcasts that are active, you, it's really, there's no comparison really. Right. And I think it's important to note too, that, um, when it comes to growing your show, it's a great way to utilize SEO. Sure, you can promote it on social media and other platforms, but it's a great opportunity for SEO. And even though there are 620 million blogs out there, if you have SEO, if your website is optimized and you optimize each each one of the show's episodes into an optimized blog post, it just increases your chance for visibility. Yeah, and I think that's a, a big, the word you said, visibility, that is a one of the main reasons that people start a podcast because they want that visibility. Mm -hmm. Yes, you can have that SEO through the website as well, but then on a podcast app, those, the audio file, the audio words that you speak are searchable in Google. Mm -hmm. They are also searchable through that podcast app. And so it gives you so much opportunity for a little income, you know, a little investment, the seven, you know, $7 a month. And then the one time for the, for the equipment and then coaching, and then you are set up, you're ready to go. And so Mm -hmm. it, it really is, it's dynamic. And I wanted to say there was something else I, I meant to tell you of the benefits of podcasting as a, um, you know, we talked a lot about mental health and I know you wrote a book about anxiety, Robin. And so, um, you know, especially in 2020, the, the mental health just went just, I mean, how could it not when we were all at home and masked and all that? Um, but there was there, I mean, a crisis, especially with our kids. And so, Mm -hmm. um, another piece of evidence that I found, it was an article that stated that by sharing our stories, by having a podcast, sharing our stories, we are improving our mental health. And I thought that was so interesting. I mean, we think about it, but then when I thought about it even further, I was like, that's, that's amazing. Like our Mm -hmm. mental health and well-being can be improved by when we share our stories. And so Mm -hmm. there's value in that. And 
uh, I, I think it's really powerful and it's, it, it kind of ignites me a little bit to, to yeah. even to, to have and, and to buoy others and, and spur others on to share their stories and throughout in a podcast and, um, and having it be, be searchable, like you said, with SEO, with our blog post and then searchable in the podcast app. Like it just, it, it fires me up. <laughs> yeah. And you know, it's funny that you brought that into play here with the mental health component. Cause I just interviewed, uh, Melanie Wilson. She just wrote a book, published a book called unsilenced. And she tells her journey of, um, mm-hmm. how she, you know, and a suicide attempt was her rock bottom. But she's, she wrote a book to tell her story. And of course she's interviewed on podcasts to promote the book and further tell her story. Mm. But we had the conversation and when you have a mental health challenge or any challenge in your life, any challenge whatsoever, sharing it not only gets it out of your brain and your heart so that you can move forward and not feel guilt and shame or whatever the you're feeling, that's negative and holding you down, but it also then gives somebody else the insight that they can do it too. Mm. They yes. can survive or they can move mm-hmm. forward or they can grow and, and change and transform and, you know, all of the benefits. So when we tell our story, the good, bad, and the ugly all combined, it's, mm-hmm. it's a way to not only cleanse ourselves, so to speak, but also mm-hmm. then give that opportunity to, to, like I always say, create that ripple effect of good in the world where, mm. you know, we're, we're helping others by sharing. Yeah. It's that kingdom impact. We have. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. It's the impact to, to continue the kingdom impact that we are able to do, but yeah, that's, it's incredible. It's incredible that we get to do that and that we have, we have story enable our yeah. stories to yeah. enable to encourage others. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And God's in our story. He, his hand mm. is everywhere in our story, which is such yes. a beautiful thing to be able to, to share that for really for his glory, right? We're called yeah. to bring glory to him, not glory to us. And I think it's really mm. easy as a podcast host, you know, when you're getting all these downloads and you have the endorphin rush of, Oh my gosh, so many downloads, whatever. But the reality is it's all for God's glory. And mm-hmm. it's very humbling for me to be able to to sit here and share stories and bring incredible people on who have their own stories to share, like yeah. you, Ren, or or Melanie, or any of the other incredible guests we've had. So it it is truly a way to just, I guess, you know, share the love, spread, spread light, all of those things that ultimately at the end of the day, that's why we have gifts and we've been called to use them. And, and it's awesome because also on the side of business that we get to get clients to come. I had one client that she had a gal listen to one episode, one of her episodes from six months before and bought her course through that. And so that's the cool thing is we can use our gifts and shine God's light for kingdom impact. And then we're able to use the gifts for those clients. And then we're, we're, they are, they're praying for somebody to come along and say, can you help me with this? They're praying for Robin to come along and say, let me help you with your business. You know, they're, they're praying for somebody like me to say, let me help you with your podcast. And we could be the answer of somebody's prayer. And so that's a good mindset to look at and say, you know, that's why we want to, you know, stand and be bold and shine our light and have that kingdom impact because we can help others. And that's how we can serve others and shine God's light to serve them through our businesses. It's, it's incredible. It's great. It's so good. Yeah, it is. And I'm so glad that you're doing this because, you know, and listeners, we've had other people on this show to talk about different components of podcasting and all of the juicy greatness that it is. Um, and I'll link those in the show notes, but I think it's really important that you're doing what you're doing to help other people be able to step into their gifts and their story and then serve other people. So thank you for what you're doing. Will you tell the listeners, Ren, where they can connect with you, learn more from you, and even take your program or join your program in January when you relaunch? Yes. Yes. I'm already starting to fill up. I'm going to have two groups in January. We keep it small so that I can serve them well and, and have that intimate, um, intimate group. But yes, I am 
Ren at renrobbins.com. That's my email address. I connect with people over on Instagram at Ren Robbins Coach. And then my website is renrobbins.com. It's two Bs and it's W-R-E-N. And so I would love to connect. I love meeting new people. And even if you are just slightly like thinking about it, to definitely download the first six steps just so that you have that. And then you can say, okay, I, I do want to do this. Um, so I, I, I'm excited to connect with your audience, Robin. Yeah, well, I'm excited you were here. Thank you very much. And listeners, you're in good hands if you go to, to Ren. She's obviously an established podcaster and she has a great program that she offers. So if you do find yourself thinking, oh, I think I might start a podcast, check her out by all means. And if you found this information helpful, please share it. If you know anybody else who wants to start a podcast, this is a great place to start just by listening to this episode, getting the inspiration and recognizing that it's really not as hard as it seems, um, especially when you follow a proven method to the steps that it takes to do it the right way so that you'll grow. All right. Thanks so much for being here, everyone. And I will see you next time. Bye.